So this lesson, what we're going to be looking at are elements and the periodic table. And the periodic table is essentially the alphabet of chemistry. It's kind of how chemists see the world. It's all written down on the periodic table. But firstly, what we're going to look at is elements. And here is our um, experience and outcome, developing knowledge of the periodic table by considering the properties and uses of various elements relative to their positions. As we saw in previous lessons about states of matter, uh, we said that everything was made up of particles. In chemistry, we call these particles atoms. And atoms look a bit like mini solar systems. And inside the atom, we have smaller particles called protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now we're going to look at that in more detail on the next slide. So what is the structure of an atom? Well, the atom contains a central bit um, called the nucleus. And in that nucleus, we have two particles. We have protons and neutrons. And it's very small, it's very dense, and all the other parts of the atom orbit around this nucleus. And the nucleus has a positive charge. Around the nucleus, we have these smaller particles called electrons. Now what they um, are found in are things called shells. And you can see on this diagram, there's two shells. And each shell can contain a different number of electrons. And those electrons move really, really quickly around the shell that it's in, around the nucleus. So the nucleus has protons and neutrons, and the electrons are outside in shells. And the electrons move very, very quickly, whereas the protons and neutrons don't move at all inside the nucleus. So all things are made up of atoms, uh, but Atoms can be different from one another. And where we have different atoms, this leads to the formation of elements. Now, elements are the simplest type of chemical on Earth. And what that means by being the simplest chemical is that it cannot be broken down into anything more simple. So if you imagine a piece of paper as uh, being an element. If you rip up that piece of paper and keep tearing it up and tearing it up, each small bit that you end up with is still a piece of paper. And that's what we mean by an element. You can break it down and break it down into smaller pieces, but every single piece is still the same thing. So every single part of an element is the same thing. There's nothing you can break it down into anything simpler. And what makes an element unique is that it only contains one type of atom. So every single atom inside an element is identical. And uh, here we have different diagrams representing elements. And each different color represents a type of an atom. So in this, the first diagram, we can see all the atoms are red and they're all the same size. So that makes it an element. In the next diagram, all the, the balls, all the atoms are blue and they're all the same size. So they're all the same type of atom. So that makes it an element. Now the next one, we can see we've got green and we've got purple atoms. So that makes it not an element because we've got two different things in there two different types of atom. And the final one, well, you can see that that final one is made up of everything in the previous three, and it is definitely not containing just one type of atom. So it is not an element. So only where you've got one type of atom. It doesn't matter if it exists as single atoms on their own, like the first diagram, or whether those atoms are joined together, like in the second diagram, all that matters is that there's only one type of atom. Now, when it comes to elements, there are 90 elements that have been found in nature. 
So that um, what we mean by nature is on the planet Earth and also on any um, thing in space that we find so far. Those are naturally occurring. However, there's around 100, um, there's around 30, sorry, um, atoms or elements that scientists have actually been able to create uh, in laboratories, in very big, sophisticated laboratories that require lots of energy. What I'd like you to do is think of, can you name any elements? And if you want to pause the video so you can write these down, have a go, but it's just see, can you come up with the names of any elements? If you are pausing the video, um, when you play back, I'll just move on to the next slide. So this is the periodic table. And this is just divided into lots of different colours. Don't worry about those colours for now. Um, and this is every element that has been discovered in nature and has been created in a lab. Now let's see uh, some elements that you might have heard of. Oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, helium. You might have heard of some metals like iron, uh, titanium. You might have heard of silver and gold, mercury, zinc. And then there are some elements that have been named after scientists. So we've got Einsteinium. We have got curium, named after Madame Curie. There are about 118 elements on the periodic table. Some things that maybe you thought of as being elements like fire and water those are not chemical elements and um, those were things that people used to believe were elements that everything was made up of before we discovered these chemical elements. So only something on this periodic table is an element and the periodic table is what we're going to learn a bit more about. So on the periodic table each element has its own symbol and that symbol either has one or two letters. And these symbols, as I said before at the start of this video, was that the symbols are like a chemical alphabet. Now, some of the symbols seem to make sense. For example, we've got C for carbon, O for oxygen, N for nitrogen. But some of the symbols don't immediately make sense. For example, we've got PB for lead, we've got W for tungsten, and AU for gold. However, there is a reason for that, and that is that some of those elements used to have um, other names and their names um, or the elements were discovered in another country. And the symbol comes from the um, name of the, from the country, name of the element from the country in which it was discovered. And um, so, for example, lead if called, used to be called plumbum. Um, and that's where we get the P and B from. It's also where we get the word plumber from because pipes, water pipes, used to all be made of lead. They're now not because we know it's not safe. Tungsten is called, used to be called wolfram, and that's where the W comes from. And gold was aurum, and that's where we get the AU from. So some of the symbols make sense. Some of the symbols need to just remember because they don't immediately make sense. Now on the periodic table, we have two sections. And if you see a copy of the periodic table, there is a zigzag line that's drawn on yellow on this slide, but it's usually drawn just a thicker black line and it looks like a staircase. And it splits the periodic table into metals and non-metals. Now the non-metals are found on the right hand side and you can see that compared to the metals there's only a few non-metals. On the left hand side of the periodic table is where we have the metals and you can see that there are some boxes on either side of that zigzag, that staircase, that are a mixture of green and purple and that's because when you get to the boundary sometimes you behave a bit like a metal or react like a metal and sometimes you react like a non-metal. So they are mixtures of the two. Now, the periodic table is also split into groups. 
Now, every column, so every vertical column, is called a group. And elements in the same group have similar chemical properties. That means if you have a similar chemical property, it means that you will react with other chemicals in the same way. So it means you react in the same way as other chemicals in the same group. And as you go down a group, as you go down a column, the elements get heavier and heavier. So the elements at the top of the periodic table are more likely to be gases than the elements at the bottom. And there are four sections of the periodic table that you need to know about. Three groups and then one block of elements. Now the first one is group one and it's called the alkali metals. And we'll discuss them in a bit more detail in the next slide. The second one is group seven and it's on the right hand side. It's not the very uh, right hand side one, it's the one just before the end. They're called the halogens, and the halogens are all non-metals and they're very reactive. Then we have the group on the very, very right hand side, and those are called the noble gases. And they are all gases, which is why they're called noble gases. But um, they are also the most unreactive elements on the periodic table. And then in the middle, a section in purple is called the transition metals and the transition metals contains pretty much all the most common metals that's where silver gold mercury iron cobalt and um, titanium that's where all of those are found in the transition metals section in the middle and on the next slide what we will see are some of the similar properties that exist for each of those groups so the four important groups, the noble gases. Now the noble gases, those are the ones on the very far right hand side. They are very unreactive and they exist as single atoms. So on their own, single atoms, and they're unreactive. They do not react with other chemicals. Then we have the halogens. So that is the group beside the noble gases. Now they are non-metals, but these, however, are very, very reactive. The first group, so the first column in the periodic table is the alkali metals. And they are metals and they are very, very reactive. They're so reactive that actually if you put them in water, some of them explode. Other ones will burst into flames and other ones will fizz, but they're very reactive. If you try and react a halogen, with an alkali metal, you get an explosion. You'll always get an explosion if you try and react the two together. They are very, very reactive. And then finally, we have transition metals. And transition metals are the metals that have a lot of different uses. So things like iron, copper, gold, things that might be used to make um, cars, aeroplanes, cutlery, so, um, electronic devices tend to be made out of transition metals uh, because they have interesting properties but they're safe for us to hold whereas alkali metals would react with sweat in our hand so that's not safe. So that was all of the material. This next set of slides just contains some questions for you to see whether or not you've picked up the information on um, elements and the periodic table. So with these questions, feel free to pause the video to write down an answer or come up with the answer and then unpause the video and I'll show you the answer. So this first question is about the periodic table. Metals are found on which side of the periodic table? So with this one, we're looking for the left or the right hand side of the periodic table. Metals are on which side of the periodic table? So that is the left hand side. On the slides that they were shown, they were shown in purple on the left hand side. Non-metals are found on which side of the periodic table? Well, non-metals, they are on the right hand side. 
So one of the groups that you were asked to try and remember was the noble gases. What was special about the noble gases? So the noble gases, what made them special was that they were very unreactive, very unreactive, and they existed as single atoms. Now here's a question, what do we call the group of the most reactive non-metals? What was the name of the group of non-metals that was very reactive? Well, that group is the halogen. So that's the group beside the noble gases. They're the most reactive non-metals. What chemical do all alkali metals react with? So what everyday common chemical do alkali metals react with? That is water. If you had said halogens, they do react with halogens. However, water is a much more common chemical that is surprising for metals to react with. But alkali metals react with water. And this is going to be our final question. Gold, iron and silver would all be described as what type of metal? They are all what type of metals? So that one is, they are transition metals. So that has been us covering elements and the periodic table. If you struggled with any of those questions, obviously watch the film back, watch the video back and um, have another practice. There's also in your summary notes a lot more information on the periodic table and those four grits that you need to know about. So make sure that you use your summary notes as well. And I will see you next time.